You do have an emergency fund, right? You know, access to cash fast in case an emergency arises. So I like to call this a working emergency fund. The minimum amount of money you want saved in an emergency fund is at least $1,000. Even if you save just $250, that can greatly reduce your chances of getting evicted or missing a utility bill. So if you don't have an emergency fund, it is time to get on it. Now, if you do your research online about where you should keep your $1,000, you will find articles from financial advisors that say you should keep your $1,000 in a high yield checking account and a Roth IRA and a certificate of deposit, a CD, a money market account, or a short term bond index fund. This needs to be a little bit more realistic. Many low income and working class families do not have these type of accounts. Some of the suggestions of where you should keep your emergency fund, you don't have immediate access to. When it comes to an emergency, you need access to your money within minutes, if not within a couple of hours. With your first initial $1,000, there are four places that I personally feel that you should keep your emergency fund. So let's start with the first line of defense for your emergency fund. And this is my handbag. Inside my handbag, I have my wallet. And you should always carry cash in your wallet. So let's see how much cash I have in my wallet. 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now for the purpose of this video, uh, my suggestion of how you should divvy up your emergency fund you should carry at least a hundred dollars in your wallet now i understand for a lot of people they don't like carrying a lot of cash in their wallet however a hundred dollars is more than enough money to cover a small emergency at the very least you want to have $20 in your wallet to at least cover gas. Now, I only had $18 in cash in my wallet. And usually what I like to do at the end of the week when I go food shopping, if I have less than $20 in my wallet, I take this out of my wallet and I add it to my emergency fund at home and I take out $20 from the bank and I put that back in my wallet so I have at least enough money to cover some gas. Now the second line of defense for your emergency fund is your checking account. Now I understand most people do not write out checks for purchases or even carry checks for that matter, but most people do carry a bank card and they pay for purchases through their checking account. I suggest having a threshold of at least $100 in your checking account. That means never going below $100. Most checking accounts have overdraft protections, which is really great, but if you make a purchase and there wasn't enough money in your account, your overdraft protection will kick in, but you will pay overdraft fees and they can be as high as $39. Have your own overdraft protection and have at least $100 in your checking account. Flat tires happen all the time because I should know because one time I had two flat tires. You could pay for that flat tire with a credit card, but a lot of people don't have credit cards. I no longer have credit cards so it's really imperative that you have some type of cash in your checking account to cover minor emergencies I recommend keeping at least $500 cash in your savings account. So what your $100 in your checking account and the $500 in your savings account that gives you $600 in your bank account and this is really great to help cover your car breaking down, your car getting towed, you need to stay at a hotel for a few nights. So now let's move on to the last place where you should keep your emergency fund. So here's my safe that I have at my house and I highly recommend you get yourself a safe if you don't have one. And this is the last place where you should keep part of your initial $1,000 for your emergency fund. You never know when a pipe might burst and the plumber only takes cash. Think of it as part of your getaway money too. But on a serious note, you never know when you might have to evacuate or you could be a female living in an unsafe situation and you need to grab cash and quickly leave and you don't want to be easily located by taking money out of the bank. So I have my cash in this plastic bag and I also have some other important documents in here. And I just put my emergency fund money in the envelopes and for your cash in your house as part of your working emergency fund, you should have at least three $300. So that's $100 in your wallet, $100 in your checking account, $500 in your savings account, and now $300 cash in your house. That all adds up to $1,000 and that is your working emergency fund. As I mentioned earlier, what good is an emergency fund if it takes two to three days to get access to your money? No, when an emergency arises, you need access to your money now, like right now.
These are just my recommendations of where you should keep your emergency fund. I highly recommend keeping cash in four places, cash in your wallet, cash in your checking account, cash in your savings account, and cash in your house. That's how an emergency fund is supposed to work for you. So if you like this video, do be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.